Hey guys, so I guess you can see that I absolutely love the fact that I have been in full alignment with this live audio. <laughs> it allows me to, you know, just kind of spontaneously as I have something, you know, that I'm heavy in thought in that I want to share, I can come on and do it. I don't have to fix the lighting and do all of that other stuff, I can just come and be and share. And so I'm absolutely loving that. Uh, for those of you who are catching me on the replay, hey there, say hello in the comments. Let me know you slid in, right? Don't hide. <laughs> um, put replay in the comments if this is your first time uh, here. Tell me. What's your name? What type of business you have? How do you serve in the marketplace? And for those of you, you've been here before. Just put hashtag renew in the comments. Um, I wanted to talk about limiting beliefs. I actually saw something that really sparked me and I thought it would be great to share um, and also create a space of awareness for those of you who come on. So one of the thing, things about beliefs is normally they are so heavily embedded in our core that we may not even be aware that that is what we believe or that is how we think. And why am I talking to you about beliefs and thinking and all of that stuff? So let me do a little background. I am actually a certified life coach. I operate as a transformational growth strategist. Um, I help people, women in particular, who want to grow their brands and their business and their life. I help them do that. Also a business coach and mentor. And <clears throat> I function from a three-point perspective in my teaching, coaching, and trainings. And one of the biggest areas of that three-point perspective is an abundant mindset. And I actually <clears throat> began understanding what an abundant mindset really was when I gave my life to Christ. And I began reading the Word. And I began seeing how God saw us, His purpose in creating us, what He desired for us. You know, for those of you who are Bible thumpers, his scriptures to line up <laughs> where he says he wishes above all things. When I read that, um, it really changed something in me. It said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So if you if this isn't your first time at the rodeo, you know, I share with you that your soul is your mind, your will and your emotions. And everything that we do is centered around your mind. So your mind has a lot to do with your money, your coin, your cheddar, and everything else that you set out to do. And so as I was being renewed in my mind and transformed through reading the word and um, studying <clears throat> as a certified life coach, and then my life experiences. So I've been an entrepreneur for about 27 years. And I owned a brick and mortar business uh, for about 10 years, had about 12 staff and employees, and um, I now consult and coach full time. <clears throat> and so through my own experiences and, and just growing my own life and my own business, I began to understand that everything, I mean like everything that was transpiring in my life, that wasn't transpiring in my life, um, everything that was happening was centered around what I believed. And many of you, the beliefs that you have now have been adapted from uh, parental uh, guidance or <clears throat> um, guardians in your youth or situations that you may have encountered, for instance. Um, I didn't really know what stress, I mean, what uh, struggle was until my adult years. So I don't remember hearing my parents like argue or talk about money. If, if my parents were talking about money, my father was talking to me about saving money and earning money. 
but I don't remember the conversation of <clears throat> actually any form of lack in in my life as a child. Now, granted, there were definitely people who were earning more revenue than my parents were, but um, lack just wasn't a subject in, in my home. I did not experience it um, that I was ever aware of as a child. And so my experience with it came in my adult life. Um, and I learned that it was transpiring because of the people that I was around and listening to and their limiting beliefs. And so there was always a battle or a struggle with what I thought I deserved and what I thought I should be doing and what the circumference of people around me were saying, almost as if what I was de desiring or actually what was just normal to me was abnormal. And so oftentimes our beliefs are formed from the five people we spend the most time listening to. So I share with you guys all the time that you are an average of the five people you spend the most time with. Um, you can do your own math. You can think about the five people you listen to the most, and then you can kind of line up your life with their life, your income. Studies statistically show that you're usually about 20%, you're either 20% above, 20% below, or right in the same average of those people, even with your income. So your moral beliefs, all of those things come into play when we think about how our beliefs are formed in our lives. And as entrepreneurs, a lot of our beliefs about the business that we're building are formed from the industry that we're in. And this is why I always suggest that if you're in a particular industry that you step outside of that lane and that industry to um, gain new information and different types of strategies because what often happens is if your information and what you're getting is completely and fully from the industry that you're in, everyone ends up looking the same, everyone ends up doing the same thing, and then that particular industry gets flooded with people who are just kind of... Um, not in a space of bringing in new ideas and new thought patterns and new concepts. But what I want to talk about as it relates to limiting beliefs, I kind of want to, uh, I want to explain it on a deeper level because I realized for me, I didn't understand that I had the limiting beliefs that I had until it was time for me to take my life or my business to the next level. And I couldn't figure out, like, why does this feel feel weird? And oftentimes, it would be something I wanted to do in my life or my business. And those who were around me, that's not how they did it. And so out of most of it was out of love. But some of it, you know, some of the information I received wasn't out of love. But mostly out of love, the people around us want to protect us. And the protection that they are giving us by way of information or advice is normally based on how far they took themselves in that particular area. So whatever it, it is that you're desiring to do in your life or in your business, whoever you're listening to is normally going to give you advice based on where they stopped, based on you know how they ran their business or how they ran their life or even how they grew their families, the traditions that they had themselves. And so oftentimes uh, we are um, inundated or our core beliefs are developed and formed from those different experiences or conversations that we have. And so I wanted to share with you guys what limiting beliefs are because if you're anything like me, I, I believe that most people don't even know uh, that they are operating their business or their life from limit from a limited space because that's their, their normalcy. That's normally the case. You recognize it when you're really serious about going to the next level. Someone may come on like myself who says something and you're like, man, I have been, you know, limiting what I'm doing based on what my core beliefs are. And I believe that and I know to be true that we can change our core beliefs when we're ready to really go to the next level. So limiting beliefs constrain us. 
if you if you want to think about what a limiting belief is, it is a belief that keeps us constrained. Now, your core beliefs aren't necessarily uh, wrong, all wrong. Some of our core beliefs are beliefs that help us and protect us and not necessarily limit us. But probably about 75% of our core beliefs that were adapted out of tradition and not because we ask ourselves the question why like why does it have to be this way and as I was saying that I was thinking about I shared a few days ago on my page how um, the Duchess from the UK um, Henry and Meghan were actually they had made a decision that they weren't going to, that they were going to relieve themselves of their royal duties um, of not all of them, but the majority of the duties that they normally have in that particular position. And they had decided that they wanted to live their life different. Now, this is normally unheard of because in a kingdom where there's kings and queens, there's also protocol and the way that things are normally done. But, you know, these two beautiful people decided that that is not what they wanted to do. Now, of course, there's probably, I mean, of course, it's been all over the media. And I'm sure there are people who are in higher positions who are not all that comfortable with them going left from what is normally traditionally done. And this often happens when you're wanting to do something different in your life or different in your business that has not been done. Like this is Maybe you're the first entrepreneur in your family. So every move that you make, the things that you're thinking about doing, they're unheard of to the people who are around you. And out of concern, most oftentimes, they may give you advice that says, no, you shouldn't do that. Or, um, you know, maybe speak to you with fear-based thinking. And if you're not careful, if you haven't decided what your core values are and what your beliefs are going to be, then it's so easy to stay in such a limited space with what you're building with your life and your business. So remember, limiting beliefs constrain us. Um, it affects what we think, what we do, and what we say. This is what our beliefs do. They affect what we think, what we do, and what we say. So at the core of all the moves you're making in your business now or not making or in your life uh, at the core of all of that, your thinking has been affected, um, what you will and won't do is affected, and what you say is also affected, and those are all aligned with your beliefs. Here's an example. For so many years, we were taught to get a great job, stay on the job till we're 65 or 70, retire, maybe our home is paid off at that time. Um, and then attempt to travel with the rest of our lives. But this new millennial generation, that is not the mindset that they have. They want to be able to live their life while they're building their dream and not wait until they're 65 to do it. And so, of course, we kind of, you know, our society may buck at what they're doing. But when I think about the what they're thinking, it, it makes complete sense. It's like, why... Why can't we build something greater so that we can experience a fulfilling life and business in the process and not, you know, wait 60 to 65 or 70 to be able to enjoy our lives? And oftentimes the way we end up is based on how we thought about it in the beginning, because, you know, normally how you start out is how you hold out. And so that's one of the things that I feel is a limiting belief in our culture and you know, that was just an example of how, you know, a limiting belief can be formed. Now, the thing about it is, although I was talking about um, being employed by someone else, like working a job for years, retiring from the job, and then, you know, what you got left while you were running, you know, trying to take all your pills and go to the doctor and all that other stuff in between all of that anyway, if we're not careful... Even though we've decided as entrepreneurs to build businesses um, and create um, bigger opportunities in our lives, we can still take on the mindset. And how that works and what that looks like is 
Um, because the residue is still there, that thought process, that limiting belief. When we do go to build a business, you know, we have this whole solo thing. Like, I mean, I can do all of this on my own. <laughs> and what normally happens is many, especially service providers, end up creating a job for themselves. It's all based on a limiting thought life or thought pattern because in their mind they don't I mean it's not normal hey Wilbur how are you dear it's not normal for people to have all of these people working for them but actually it is guys it's just that you're the person that owns the company right so maybe you work for a fortune 500 company or 100 company or whatever you would just be the person that owned it and so it's a matter of being able to shift and see yourself in a different light and in a different position. Here are some beliefs that, uh, limiting beliefs that keep entrepreneurs stuck. Number one, I already know that. I already know that. And it's so easy to have that mindset in today's times because there is so, so much information. You do listen to so many trainings like the ones that I do. Um, there's YouTube, there's Google, there's so much information that you've skimmed over, you've read, or you've heard before, and we take on the limiting belief that I already know that. And what happens in that space, because there's levels of consciousness in what you really understand and how you know it, and how you actually applying it and seeing results, and they're two different things. So we've become inundated with information so much that we often say, I already know that. And in that space, most oftentimes, we miss opportunities to actually grow because hoarding information <clears throat> and implementing it and getting results is two completely different things. So there's knowing from information that you've read or you've heard, and then there's knowing because you've experienced it, because you've gotten results from it. It's two different things. And sometimes people teach from that perspective. They teach from what they've read, and then there are others who have experienced it, and they teach not only from what they read and learned, but what they experienced. And it's a whole nother level of information and insight when you think about those two things. So one limiting belief that so many people say, and it's because we have information coming everywhere. I already know that. It leaves no room for possibility or growth. Um, it creates a constraint, as we said before, that a limiting belief does. Um, entrepreneurs say um, they forget, right? And they say, I'm selling a product or a service and not a result. It's a, it's a limiting belief for growing your business because that means that I can just throw up what I have, you know, if you have an outfit or if it's a home that you're selling, you're a realtor, maybe you're a personal stylist. This is how, so let's think about it like this. Imagine there's a personal stylist and uh, that's what they do. But because they thought that they were selling a product or a service um, and they weren't getting the response that they wanted, they went to find a product or service to sell. But what really happens is they're not selling a result. And all of this comes along in, in your marketing and what you're sharing with your audience. For instance, when I talk about abundance mindset, I help people understand that shifting to new mindsets will transform their life because their thinking is different and so it creates different results. So a limiting belief is that you're selling a product or service and not a result. When you can figure out what the result is that you are... Um, offering to the consumer or the consumer gets from what it is that you offer, then it changes your sales. For instance, I have a um, master class that I'm offering and the result is what I talked about. Removing the limiting beliefs and allowing people to actually earn more money because they've changed their thinking about what it is that they're doing. That is the result, right? Hey, Mia, dear, how, how are you? Um, the next limiting belief is what you say you are. So if you're in the beauty industry and maybe you are a stylist or you're a photographer and you say you're a photographer, if that is how you, you see yourself when it's time to do something else that's actually going to take your business to the next level. So you may say, 
um, I'm a photographer, so you don't feel the need to market. You just kind of automatically think people are just going to come because you're focused on the fact that you are a photographer, but selling and marketing is part of what you do to get your photography, photography services sold. You guys get that? But So what you say you are can be a limiting belief if you don't understand the fullness of what is required to make that um, in, into coin, <laughs> you know, to, to, com to make that convert or to convert a client or customer. Oftentimes, limiting beliefs are centered around fear. They're like fear-driven thoughts. Uh, and the biggest thing, guys, and this is a level of awareness, and you have to sit and ask yourself, like, when it comes time to do something for your business, and there are different reasons why we say yes or no, or we decide to do something or we don't. But if it's something that you know you need, if, you, if it's something that you know is in alignment with where you are, and you find yourself saying no, you have to ask yourself the question, you know, why am I constantly passing over opportunities regularly? And a lot of times, it's, it comes from a social aspect of what we're actually concerned about, right? We're concerned about... Um, the thoughts of others, the criticism of others, possible rejection, possible ridicule. Let me ask you this. If you, that new signature course, that new product, that service, if you knew that there was a 100% chance that you could promote it, people would buy it, and it would sell out, would you do it? And if your answer is yes and you have not done it, then you know you could possibly have you you could possibly have a limiting belief that is based around a social aspect where you're concerned. Remember I said oftentimes our limiting beliefs are based on fear. So where you may be concerned of the thoughts of others, the criticism, the rejection, the ridicule. But what if let's just go Bible for a minute. What if Noah decided that he wasn't going to build the ark because he didn't see any rain because he thought what if he decided not to go forward with it because he was worried about what people would say you know people were talking about noah right like he crazy like this joker been over here building this big ridiculous looking thing for all these years for all this time talking about he's building it because the rain is coming and it's not raining. So people thought he was crazy. If Noah was concerned about the ridicule, the rejection, people probably rejected him like, oh, he has lost it, right? Um, or the criticism of others. He'd have never built the ark. He would have never built the ark. Secondly, let's think about Apple. Now, I'm not an Apple girl. I do have an Apple product, but somebody purchased that for me. Um, but my, my baby's an Apple girl. So let's imagine Steve Jobs was operating from scarcity thinking or limiting beliefs. Now, at the time, well, I think it might have been Bill Gates, whichever one uh, decided that they were going to have a computer in every home. At this time, computers were weird looking things. They were huge. They were humongous. To even have a vision that big and align with it, he definitely had to remove the limiting beliefs because there was nothing that looked like it. Um, there was nothing that had been done to that measure before, and he saw one in every household. Imagine if he was worried about being ridiculed, which he probably was. People were probably like, you're crazy. You know, what is this thing that you're doing? Nobody's going to purchase that. And um, But look, we're on smartphones. All of it is connected. We're able to do things that we weren't able to do before because... Um, Steve Jobs removed the limiting beliefs. I mean, he had to remove a lot of them because he was doing things that hadn't been done before. And many of you aren't moving forward on things that have already been done. <laughs> I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Let's think about Jesus. We just talking about some people. What if they were operating with limiting beliefs? So here's this man. We're talking about Jesus with a message that he feels is going to go around the entire world by just sharing it with 12 people. Listen, there was no way on this earth he could have been operating with limiting beliefs. 
I mean, he had a message that he was determined was going to get out over the whole world with just 12 people. There was no internet. There were no telephones. None of the stuff that we have now, as far as communication is concerned, there's no podcast. There's no live audio like I'm doing now, no blogs. All the things that we're using to market our business, get our messages out, um, impact more people, earn more revenue, none of that stuff was available. But because he was not operating from limiting beliefs, he believed, one, he fully believed in his message. And then he created a system that he used with the disciples to get the message out before the people. And then what about Mark Zuckerberg? So we are on Facebook right now. Some of you may see this at another time on YouTube. Hello, YouTube, um, Instagram, or the likes. But what if Mark said, I'm not going to create this Facebook thing. He was spending his time while he was in college creating an app for children, for, well, I say children, um, for kids in college. What if you know, the thought, this is not going to work. Now, I'm not saying that those thoughts don't come up in our building process, but we have to have something that counteracts it, right? We have to have something that allows us to see past, you know, those limiting beliefs that come up, or some of them are core beliefs. And the thing about core beliefs is oftentimes when people are operating from a limiting belief, they actually look for things to support that belief, so they find other people who believe exactly what they believe. And because of that, the possibility begins to dissipate in their mind about whether or not something greater can ever even possibly happen. When you're operating, when limiting beliefs are functioning in your life and your business, there's always this thought that there's a low chance of success. Remember I shared before, if you thought that that thing would 100% work that you're wanting to do, maybe that you're wanting to connect with, you're wanting to get involved with, if you had a 100% certainty that it would work, would you do it? More than likely, many of you, all of you, would probably say yes. And so is there a possibility that you're thinking from a low, that there's a low chance of success because Whatever we believe, we get in alignment with. If we don't believe it, we will never take action on it. So some of the stagnation, the stuckness, or um, just the desire to go to the next level that you are moving into is centered around your belief. It's something that I teach all the time with my clients. It helps them to shift, create new income, create a different level of quality for their families. It's all in our mindset. And I'm going to say this one, and I'm, I already know that they're going to be, um, this is going to rub some people the wrong way. But when you hear certain prices or what people pay for certain things, do you say, I would never pay that? So as a coach and consultant, I know that there are coaches who charge 50K for programs and when I hear that, it doesn't move me in a negative manner. It actually gets me in alignment because I know whatever is at that level there, the return on investment is huge. It's huge. But when we're operating from limiting beliefs and we say things like, I would never do that, we are limiting our chances of actually getting in the space where the people are on that particular level. Do you guys get that? Um, I could go into the whole tithing thing, but I won't go into that uh, because it, it, it can be, you know, spiritual beliefs aligned with it. But when you hear certain prices or what people pay for certain things, do you say, I would never? Because remember, our thoughts are what allow us to move to next levels or stay in the same space. And for me, when I hear things like that, I'm like, what is it on that level? I want to know what's at that level. What are people, what is, what is the return if I'm making an investment like that? That's, my, that's always my thought. And then the second thing is I know that if I'm investing on any level, I'm betting on myself 
And I am going to get some value out of that because of how I've chosen to not only give, but receive in my life, right? It's all of that is a matter of choice. I saw something that said, all you need is faith and vision. All you need is faith and vision. And I do feel there is a space in your entrepreneurial journey where your faith and your vision will get you started. It will get you going. I truly believe because that's where your resourcefulness comes in. But there are levels in your business. If you really want it to grow, it's going to take some money too. Right? And as long as the belief is that it only takes faith and vision, you will never invest for the next level. Whatever the investment needs to be for you, you won't do that because the limiting belief is that it only takes faith and vision. But it also takes revenue. Because if not, the I think faith is definitely something and our vision is something that we have to have the entire time. But there are levels. There are levels. So I wanted to come in and just kind of give you guys... Um, Another level of awareness about limiting beliefs because I, I've operated with them. There are, I'm certain, uh, well, I know there are more limiting beliefs that I have for my next level that I have to overcome in my mind. And oftentimes when we're operating with those limiting beliefs, we have no idea. We don't know that that's what we're doing. We're just doing our thing. A limiting belief could be if I do a whole lot of busy stuff, that's not moving the needle. It, it's going to make it happen. That's oftentimes a limiting belief for many service-based providers because they want to do more and more and more. And I, I made the distinction in a post. I said multiple streams of revenue are almost necessary for, for the entrepreneurial journey. However, multiple streams of revenue that earn money and a profit is more important. Because when we feel like I, I have five streams of revenue, but are they earning money? Are they, you know, creating a profit for you? These are limiting beliefs, and we don't always understand that that's the space that we're operating from, but it is limiting beliefs. Lancer, how are you? Thank you for joining. It's a limiting belief. Because what if you took all of the energy, we're talking about alignment here and, and how we manifest on different levels, what if we took the energy that it's taking for six or seven things that aren't working and we aligned all of that energy to one thing and then got that thing popping, right? Until it was just flowing. And then we created another stream from that. So limiting beliefs are things that constrain us from our next level. I am teaching a masterclass tomorrow evening to women. It's called As a Woman Thinks. And I'll be sharing... Um, tools and concepts that help me shift from 1K to 5K in the services that I offer and sign people easily. Um, with the concept, it's helped me in everything. I use it all the time when I'm ready to go to my next level. I teach it to my clients. Um, I have clients who have increased their income by 50K um, over a two-year time frame. And some of you are looking for you know, that to happen in, in 90 days, and, I, and it definitely can happen. But I think sometimes if you focus on where you are and create a goal that can multiply from where you are, and then you'll see a quantum leap. But, you know, some of you are looking for 100K a month, and, you know, you haven't created a product or service that generates you $1,000 a month yet. And so it makes a difference. I'm not saying that that shift can't happen because... Trust me, I did a quantum leap in my own business, but I was creating the other revenue first, right? So when you're thinking, you're thinking, remember, your mind has a lot to do with your money and everything you set out to do. I invite you to join me tomorrow for the masterclass, bit.ly slash wthink, bit.ly slash wthink. It's actually part, it's a beta 
for a program that I'm launching later in the year. And I wanted to give women an opportunity to use the tools and concepts <clears throat> on things that they want to manifest, things that have been sitting on their list, things they've been wanting to do. And I want to see them manifest. So I want to see them experience new income levels, uh, mindset shifts that are really going to take their business to the next level. I believe that mindset is the thing that's missing in most areas in our life. It's what we're thinking about it. And oftentimes our limiting beliefs keep us in unwanted situations or circumstances longer than we have to be. Trust me, I understand that. Um, I believe just every area of our life, what is holding us back is our belief. It's our thinking. And so I want to share with you guys how I work with my clients and help them shift and change their beliefs and remove some of the limiting beliefs that are keeping them from the next level and then give them an actual strategy. So the strategy or tool, rather, I'll say tool, because regardless of what it is that you're trying to obtain in your business or in your life, maybe it's been on your list for a long time, you'll be able to use this tool and apply it. So one person might have a different desire or um, goal that they want to hit from another, but they'll be able to use this tool and then use it over and over again. So I invite you guys, if you know that you've been stuck, stagnant, or you just want to go to your next level, you don't even have to be stuck. You're just ready to really manifest differently in your life. I invite you to join us for that masterclass. It's tomorrow evening, 8.30 p.m. And because I'm offering it as a beta, it will be a portion of a program that I'm doing. Um, it's only 97 bucks for uh, women entrepreneurs, and it's called As a Woman Thinks. Scripture says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And oftentimes we're saying things out of our mouth, right? We're saying it out of our mouth, but it's not in alignment. We're thinking something completely different. I can't. It won't work. What if? But out of our mouth is 2020 is going to be my year. I'm going to be a million. You know, those are the things that are coming out of our mouth, but we're not in alignment with those things. When you get in alignment, all of the things that look difficult. Now, I think that challenges help us to expand and grow, but there's an ease and a flow that comes with it when you get in alignment. Once you're in alignment, Russell, um, Lancer, Andrea, how are you? There's something that shifts when you get in alignment. Those things that feel... Um, like a tug and a pull, when you're in alignment, <clears throat> it just shifts. It simply shifts. So I invite you to join us tomorrow evening for that Master Life class. I'm also doing, I decided to do a 30-day um, accountability group on Facebook. So you'll take the Master Class with us on tomorrow evening. And then you will have an opportunity to um, be in an accountability group for 30 days so that um, you can really manifest. You have the support while you are shifting your mindset about the things that you know you have been attempting to do, but, you know, it's just been a struggle for you or you haven't been able to move past the level that you're at now. Um, it's your thinking. It's all aligned with your thinking. I want to teach you some things about that on tomorrow that will help you shift, change, and see different results in your life, in your business. You guys have a super amazing evening. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.